Hi girls, it's Miss Madison. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about a famous artist and I wanna kinda get you guys thinking about art because I know that a lot of you have been doing it while you've been at home. So I want you to learn a little bit more about artists in the past and what kind of things that they did. So we're gonna start with one of my favorite artists, Georgia O'Keeffe, who actually has over a thousand works to her name. And in a lot of her work, she actually emphasizes the use of color and shape. When we talk about color, we can talk about color in two different groups. We can talk about warm colors and cool colors. So conveniently, my oil pastel pan actually already has them kind of divided up into warm and cool colors. So if you look at these colors, so from this yellow to this pink, these are all what we would consider warm colors. These are colors that you would associate with things like fire or the sun, things that are usually pretty warm. Over here, from this blue to this green, we have cool colors, and these are things that are associated with like nature, water, things that are colder. And then we actually have a third group in the middle of these, which are colors like this white, this black, this gray, and this brown. These are considered neutral colors because they don't fit into warm or cool. And the next thing we talk about is shape. And shape isn't just two-dimensional. Shape is actually three-dimensional, even when we're just drawing on a piece of paper. And you can see this because this looks flat. There isn't any depth to it because it doesn't appear to get darker or lighter. Where over here, you can see that there are shadows and highlights, so it looks like it's waving in and out where this looks flat. Georgia O'Keeffe used both color and shape to express landscapes and flowers. So we're going to see if we can do the same thing. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get a piece of paper. My piece of paper is huge because this is an actual project that I'm working on. You can use a smaller piece of paper if you don't wanna use one this big, or you could use one bigger than this if you wanna go crazy. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to pick a color family. So I think I'm gonna pick cool colors because I actually usually like to use warm colors. So I'm gonna to try to go a little bit out of my comfort zone this time. And I encourage you to look at the two pictures that I'm going to include of some of her artwork to kind of get some inspiration. Um, but after that, I want you to just think of a flower that you really like. I'm going to be drawing a rose because I think those are the easiest for me to draw. Um, but you could draw a hibiscus flower, you could draw a dandelion, you could draw a black eyed pea. Whatever kind of flower you want to draw, you can go nuts. But remember, you're only picking one color family to use. So if you pick the cool color family, you're not going to use any warm colors. And if you pick the warm color family, you're not going to use any cool colors. And I am doing these with oil pastels. You can actually do these with anything. You can do them with colored pencils, or you could do them with crown, or you could do them with markers. Just whatever you have. So I'm going to start by, I'm going to use my darkest color. So this really dark blue, I think, is going to be the darkest color that I have. And I'm going to think about the shape of each individual petal of the flower rather than the entire flower. So if you were drawing um, like a dandelion or a daisy, you would want to think about that shape of the flower where I'm drawing a rose. So I'm going to think about the petals and how they move out. And I think my favorite thing about drawing flowers is that flowers are actually naturally a little bit asymmetrical. Almost no flower is symmetrical. So you don't have to worry about your petals looking lopsided because chances are a real flower would have the same kind of petals. So I've drawn roses so many times that I know this from my brain, but you might need to look at a picture of your flower to think about this. But we talked about shape and how that shape is often created by depth, which is basically just the shadows and the highlights that we put in. So I want you to take a color that's um, lighter than this color, but not too light. So only a little bit lighter. So I think I'm going to use this color. And I'm going to draw a line where I think that the shadows would end on this. And then I'm actually gonna fill in those spaces with that same color. So where I drew a line here, I would fill in right back here. 
And you're probably going to have to look at a picture of your flower to see where those shadows fall. But that's part of art. A big part of it is being able to observe and put what you're seeing onto the paper. All right, and if you have, if you're working with colored pencil or with crown, you can actually go really lightly next to those shadows to make it a little bit more of a lighter shadow. It's not going to work if you have marker, but if you're using crown or colored pencil or oil pastels like I am, that will work. So now we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to pick what highlight color we're going to use for our flower. Um, and you're going to want this to be the lightest color on your image. So I'm actually going to use this blue because it is the brightest, prettiest little blue that I have in this set. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in where I want those highlights to be. And if you make a mistake, just work with it, you know? That's another one of the really fun parts of art and why I find art so much fun to do a lot of the time is because even when I mess up, I know that I can fix it. Okay, now that you have those, you're gonna wanna find the middle color and you're gonna wanna fill in what's left. And if you have crowns or colored pencil, you'll notice that it's gonna to start to kind of blend out with what you did before. If you have marker, it's gonna be more of a, like a solid shape. It's not gonna be as blended out, but it's still gonna look really good. Be really careful when you're getting close to your highlight, because if you're not careful, you will overpower it with the darker color. If you're using crowns, oil pastels, or colored pencil, I encourage you to leave some white spots because I'm actually going to show you something really neat that you can do with most crowns or colored pencils that you might not have known that you could do before. If you're using marker, go ahead and fill those in. You don't want to leave any white spots. So for my people that used crowns or colored pencils or oil pastels, you're going to find your white tool, your white color, and I'm going to show you something really, really neat that you probably didn't know you could do. I know a lot of you say that there's like no use for a white crown or a white colored pencil, but this is going to make you hold on to them. So you're going to take it and you're actually going to move in the direction of your shape. So like this petal right here, that's actually going to be like curving in this direction. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to make really short little strokes in that direction. And what you should notice, no matter what you're using, is that it's actually going to blend the color a little bit. You may have to press down a little bit harder to get this to work, but it will start to blend out the color, especially if you're using colored pencil. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this for the rest of this and finish it up. And then I'm going to let you see the final thing and we'll have a couple more words to say and then we'll be done. Okay, now I've gone and done that to the whole thing and you can see the finished product. So you can actually see the shape form due to the highlights and also due to the direction of the strokes that we used with our um, white pencil or crown if you used pencil or crown. Even if you didn't, you should still be able to see the form based on the shadows and highlights that you put in. And that's it for this activity. Um, so if you like Georgia O'Keeffe's work, I encourage you to look into her a little bit more and maybe try to copy some of her stuff if you really like art. Whatever you made today, I want you to take a picture of it and send to us, or you can hang on to it and show me whenever we get back. I would absolutely love to see it. I know this video was really long, so I'm going to end it now. Thank you girls for watching, and I hope you have a good day.